In this session, we will be learning valuation of inventories and stock taking. Okay, so let us first understand what is an inventory. Inventory comprises of stock of raw materials, then work in progress, finished goods, and miscellaneous item. Okay, so now let us take an example here. Okay, suppose you have a ketchup manufacturing industry. Manufacturing industry. Okay, so usually when you say stock or inventory, it is as on particular date. Okay, so say as on today. Today, hmm? you will have some tomatoes, then spices, correct? As a stock in your factory, all these are raw materials okay then there will be some work in progress so work in progress in the sense the raw materials have been already taken to process the finished goods that is there may be some tomatoes or spices or ketchup which is not completed or which is in the process or pipeline correct that is work in progress then finished goods what is finished goods finished goods will include all your ketchup bottles if you have sachets then ketchup sachets which are there in your factory then miscellaneous items miscellaneous items can be any other items like say packing materials you have some empty bottles which you will use for packing then you have some empty sachets correct then some stickers, then boxes, okay. all these are not raw materials, but they are some miscellaneous items, packing materials. Then there may be some other small, small items. So as on given date, you any day if you take, you will have some stock of raw materials, you will have some stock of WIP, you will have some stock of finished goods and you will have some stock of miscellaneous items. Okay, So all this comprises of inventory. Okay, Now we will see why inventory valuation is required or important. Now we will see why the valuation of inventory is required or is important. So value of credit stock is put at the credit side of trading account. Trading account is similar to profit and loss account but it is usually prepared by a trading or manufacturing companies. Okay, So it, uh, it is either ap appearing on the credit side of trading or profit and loss account or you have to reduce it from opening stock and purchases to find cost of goods sold. Okay, So in order to derive correct profit what we need to do is we need to reduce cost of goods sold from our selling price goods sold from our selling price so what is the formula for cost of goods sold is opening stock plus purchases minus purchase return and minus closing stock okay so for purpose of finding cost of goods sold we need this closing stock and this closing stock for the particular period will become opening stock for the next period beginning from the end of this particular period for example if you take closing stock as on 31st march 2016 it will become opening stock as on 1 4 2016 okay so for this purpose we require closing stock so either you calculate cost of goods sold directly or what you do is on the credit side of trading account you have to put the closing stock okay to arrive at a correct gross profit now the value of closing stock, whatever is the value of closing stock as on part at the end of the particular period is also appearing on asset side of balance sheet. Okay. Since it's an asset, we have a stock of goods 
and it's our asset so it is appearing on the asset side of the balance sheet as a closing stock so therefore it is very important to value the inventory now apart from this the closing stock is also considered as an additional security for the purpose of loan in that case at the end of every month or every quarter depending on your bank policy you need to submit the value of your inventory at the end of month every quarter or at the end of the year end to the bank okay so that is why it is very important to value your inventory now let's understand what is stock taking now let's understand what is a stock taking okay normally all the operations are suspended for one or two days during the financial year and then what is happening is physical inventory is taken for everything in the go down and store periodically so what happens is at the end of the financial year or during some at the end of the quarter or at the end of the every month for one or two days all the operations are suspended and then each and every inventory is physically counted okay now this will be used for valuing stock at the end of the year so what happens is if the financial year ends on 31st march 2006 what will happen is that the in stock will be taken in the last week of the financial year and subsequently all the purchases and sales are adjusted to that stock for example, if the stock taking is done on 25th March 2016, then all the subsequent sales and purchases from 25th to 31st are adjusted to derive at the stock as on 31st March 2016. This is what practically happens in any factory manufacturing industry or any store. Okay, so let's see this example stock as on 25th March 2016. Now you have a stock of raw materials, then you have a stock of finished goods and you have a stock of packing materials then you have purchases from 25th to 31st March since this is a manufacturing industry you won't have any purchases of finished goods you have purchases of raw materials and packing materials okay then you have sales or you have issued to production from 25th March 2016 to 31st March now you in this is a manufacturing industry so what you will be selling is only finished goods that is ketchup bottles or ketchup satchels correct you won't be selling the raw materials so this raw materials and packing materials are issued to the production correct now let's prepare a statement showing a stock as on 31st march 2016 okay so first we'll put the stock as on 25th march so let's see or tomato tomatoes is 10,000. okay raw material that is tomatoes so it comes to how much 10,000 so I'll put it as 10,000 kgs hmm? then purchases are there any purchases yes raw material tomatoes there are some thousand purchases so I'll add this then is anything issued for production yes raw material issued to production is 5,000 kgs this one so I'll put it as 5000 since we are reducing so since this is a raw material there is no sale okay so what is the stock of tomatoes 10,000 plus 1000 that comes to 11,000 mm. minus 5000 so stock as on 31st March is 6000 kgs similarly spices okay so let's see what is the stock of spices on 25th march it's 1000 kgs so i'll put it at 1000 kgs okay then add purchases are there any new purchases yes what is a purchase how much is a purchase 1000 kgs was the original stock so purchase is 50 kgs so 50 kgs purchase of spices is 50 kgs and how much is issued to production 200 kgs so 200 kgs so what is a the since this is a raw material there is no sale so what is the stock as on 31st month 1000 plus 51050 minus 200 so that comes to 
850 kgs correct now the next one finished good ketchup bottles okay so let's see what was the stock of ketchup bottles thousand bottles as on 25th march so ketchup bottles was also thousand thousand bottles okay now what is a since this is a finished good there won't be any purchases then there won't be any issue to production also there will be only goods then less sales what is a sales how much is the sales of ketchup bottles 500 you can see it here 500 so just reduce it and then 500 bottles is a stock as on 31st march okay then ketchup sachets sachets again it's a finished good so opening stock was 10000 sachets then per there won't be any purchases since it's a finished good there won't be any issue to production then what is a how much is the sales sales is 6000 sachet you can see it here so 6000 you reduce it so what is the balance which is coming here is 4000 sachets now the packing materials bottles and sachets now these are empty bottles which will be used for filling the ketchup okay so what is the opening stock as on 25th march for packing material bottle 500 bottles so I'll put it as 500 500 then what if are there any purchases of bottles let's see yeah there are thousand purchases of bottles okay so I'll put it as thousand then are there any issued to production yes hundred bottles are issued to production then there won't be any sales since this is a packing material so total is thousand plus five hundred one thousand five hundred minus hundred okay so that comes to one thousand four hundred bottles okay now there is one more satches let's see what is a opening stock as on 35th march 2016 is thousand So you put thousand here then how much was purchased purchases is five thousand satches right five thousand so i'll put it as five thousand here correct and then issued to production is two thousand then there is nothing here. so six thousand minus two thousand that comes to 4000 searches okay this is the way you calculate your st stock a week before your end of the financial year and then subsequently add all the purchases and sales now and there may be also some adjustments like there are some purchase returns or something all those things also need to be adjusted okay so this is how you derive the stock at the end of the year or end of a particular period now we will see how to value inventory or how to value inventory inventory is valued at lower of historical cost or net realizable value so historical cost or net realizable value lower of historical cost of net realizable value is the value of the inventory a historical cost historical cost means it has it is cost of purchase that is cost of purchase of that particular stock then cost of conversion when the stock is converted the cost of conversion related to that particular stock and other cost in the normal this is important in the normal course of business whatever are the other cost in bringing the inventory up to their present location and condition now in our earlier example we had taken an example of a ketchup manufacturing industry 
Now in that ketchup manufacturing industry, let's analyze each item of inventory one by one. Okay, for example, tomatoes, tomatoes and spices. Okay, now these are raw materials. Correct. Now, in valuation of the inventory, now this will include cost of raw material. Correct. Plus, if there are any transport cost which is incurred to bring the raw material to the current location that is up to store or go down. Plus freight. Okay. Plus loading and unloading charges okay so whatever are th the cost of raw material we have to add this transport cost freight and loading and unloading charges now this is the co the cost which are been in incurred in the normal course of business to bring the inventory to their present location or conditions all these costs correct so all this become the historical cost of inventory okay similarly if you see packing materials okay so what were they satches and bottles correct now the for bottles and sachets also there will be same formula cost plus whatever is the transport cost plus freight plus loading and unloading charges all this will be included in the historical cost correct now let's see finished goods next is finished goods that is stock of tomato ketchup bottles and or tomato ketchup sachets now if we are taking the cost of this inventory what it will include it will include all the cost of raw material plus cost of packing material correct plus manufacturing cost the manufacturing cost is the cost of conversion that is cost which has been required to convert the tomatoes into tomato ketchup bottles or tomato ketchup sachets so it will include all manufacturing costs also okay now in some rare cases there for example if you take an example of wine industry okay now wine if it is required to be stored okay so that will include the storage cost of wine also okay other cost in the normal course of business to bring inventories up to their present location or condition so if say if wine needs to be stored for say 10 to 15 years the storage cost of that wine needs to be included in the historical cost okay now net realizable value net realizable value net realizable value is actual or estimated selling price in the ordinary course of business less cost incurred to make the sale so whatever is the selling price estimated selling price
estimated selling price minus cost required to sell okay so this is net realizable value so whatever whatever we take example of say tomatoes raw materials or uh, tomato ketchup sachets bottles or packing material whatever is the estimated selling price minus cost required to sell that will be considered as a net realizable value okay so when whenever the inventory is valued so valuation of inventory valuation of inventory is lower of two things historical cost and net realizable value okay now there is no unique formula to determine the historical cost okay there are various methods in accounts wherein we calculate the historical cost of inventory so we will be seeing all the accounting all the methods to calculate historical cost of inventory those methods are fifo lifo weighted average okay then there are also some other methods which are related to uh, specific industries like specific identification method specific identification method then there is standard cost method then there is adjusted selling price method okay so all this are some of the methods of calculating historical cost okay. now in our next sessions we will be seeing all this methods and how to calculate the historical cost of the inventory in each of this methods one by one okay thank you